<laughs> Thank you. Like Guanajuato? <laughs> Guanajuato, yeah. 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 It's so green when yeah. we were there. It was, uh, <laughs> you know, you got one after it rained a little bit, I guess. Um, yeah, I was like, ah, I recognize that. Yeah. Oh, well, a big, big, big congrats on No Man's Land. It's an entertaining modern day Western thriller with a dramatic twist, and I'm here for it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Oh, no. So you guys are brothers working in films, been dreaming of working in films since you're a little kid. So I want to hear that in a second. But first, let's begin with you, Mr. Jake. What made you want to co-write the script and star as Jackson Greer in No Man's Land? I mean, where did the idea for your passion project come from? This was really a story that, you know, I had sifting around somewhere in my heart, really, really my whole life. We, we grew up in Texas, but we got to travel to Mexico a lot as kids with our dad who worked there. And I just, I'd always loved road movies, you know? Um, I love movies, I'm not an avid reader, but when I figured out Mark Twain and Huck Finn and those kind of movies, they really captivated me. And so when I became a filmmaker, I was like, how do I, you know, how do I tell my version of that? And uh, this was it, you know, we wanted to show life, life on the other side. Oh, so that's where the Huck Finn uh, idea come from, by the yes, way, the from the film. <laughs> and, and then you approach Connor to direct the film, is that how it happened? Yeah, I man, I think it happened like pretty organically. Um, you know, we sort of, we, we wear a lot of different hats, but some of them, you know, I'm, I'm just the director and, and Jake, I don't have any aims on acting and I think Jake acts, but doesn't have aims on directing. So we were kind of planning this from the very, very start uh, when it was just like the kernel of an idea of like, okay, we're gonna, let's, let's do this movie. We're gonna tackle something really important. You know, we're gonna do an entertaining film, but a, that's really about something has a lot of heart. And, uh, you know, you're going to write it, I'm going to direct it, we're gonna act in it, we're going to produce it. Somehow we're going to, somehow we're going to get it made. And eight years later, you know, we were able to do that, thankfully. Um, oh, now, Mr. Connor, describe No Man's Land to the viewers in your own words. Yeah, it's, I mean, people don't know a lot about it. You know, the, the term is originally more ascribed to like World War One, you know, area in between the trenches where no one could survive. And now we have this really interesting space of land in Texas, you know, there's already a lot of hard border walls there. And there's often, you know, 20, 30 miles in between the, the hard wall and the Rio Grande River, which is the, the actual border. So you have these people, thousands of US citizens, Texans, who are living south of the wall and they need their passport to, to go to Walmart. And uh, there's no, the U.S. Postal Service does not deliver. There's no cops coming to help you. Uh, you're on your own. You're in this countryless strip of land. And we just thought that was a really interesting uh, space for the start of this movie, especially where we go with it, which is like this uh, modern Western storytelling where you're kind of on the frontier and there's, it's a lawless lawlessness to it that we really liked. So you guys grew up, loving films like I like you said earlier so were you guys switch roles so one's directing one's acting or how did <laughs> tell us a little bit about that He's the, the genesis of the Allen brothers <laughs> I, know, I think mostly we we stick to our own lanes in the directing acting thing but we're both really avid writers our, yeah. our father was a writer and he's a, a published author and so starting very early on you know we, we both were uh, uh you know, pushed into writing and, and loved writing. And so we really overlap there. Yeah. But then when it comes to directing and acting, we sort of have our own place too. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I love, going back to No Man's Land, one of the things that I love about it is, at its heart, is immigration, right? But I love that um, it, it's it's the human story of immigration, not the political story of it. Do you, do you agree with me on that, Jake? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that just comes with trying to, stay true to the situation there and to the people there and when you're a rancher and your cows are escaping because your fence keeps getting cut you know you kind of stop watching cnn or whatever and worrying about geopolitics you, you just want to go get your your cows back yeah. and when your mexican father trying to take your son to a better life that's all you're thinking about and that is the similarity of these two families that we might see as opposite because they don't look the same, but they, they both want the same thing for their children, for their family. And if you tell the political story, if you start going too political with it and your own personal politics gets in the movie, then you just get sucked into one direction, especially in the, 
the hyper-polarized world that we live in right now, all of a sudden you're just, you're only on one side and everyone on the other side, they don't have a place in the movie there. Yeah. They don't see themselves. And so uh, we, what we really wanted to do was avoid politics, tell the human, the human side of the, the humanness of the story and show everyone in their true light, which is, which is ultimately sympathetic, you know, no matter what side you're on, you know, you, hopefully you see yourself in them. And on, the, on that note, I also love that it's told from both perspectives, right? The Americans, Mexicans, uh, and depending on how you're looking at it, the predator and the prey, the hunter and the hunted, right? Absolutely. I mean, we even have, you know, George Lopez plays a Mexican-American Texas Ranger who doesn't speak Spanish. Right. And so, you know, you know right from the start, you, you see George Lopez in a Texas Ranger truck trying to, trying to learn Spanish. And, you know, I think we immediately wanted to, to break stereotypes. Um, and we were just so happy to have that kind of that third dimension, if you will, to the, to the situation and to the border. I love that one line, uh, you know, I'm a ranger. I'm like, oh, do they still have those? <laughs> yeah. That is funny. Um, and speaking of George Lopez and all the other stars, thank you for putting Andy McDowell in the film, by the way. There's, there's, this, there's one telling scene. When she was talking to her husband, played by Frank Grillo, and she said, we used to help those Mexican immigrants, you, you know, crossing. They used to give them blankets and food. And then she asked, what happened to us? And that stuck with me. Mm -hmm. I Thank love you. that line. Thank you for keying on that. Uh, that's something we came across. I think you, you found some really interesting mm -hmm. research. And, you know, there's, there's ranchers who now would be seen as incredibly unsympathetic. You know, people who are now like the Minutemen guys who patrol their ranch with rifles and stuff. But 30 years ago, they were, you know, Baptist Christians living on the border who would help out. But over time, their generosity and their goodness gets eroded away by, you know, the damage done by the issue and whatever damage is being done by the, you know, uh, the, the problems that are happening in their backyard until they're not the people that they, that they were. And then they, they show this realization moment of like, gosh, we're, I, I, I identify as a good person, but now I'm looking at myself and I, I don't, I don't recognize that reflection anymore. Yeah. And I thought Andy did such a wonderful job in that scene and Frank Grillo as well, yeah. where he's, where he's saying, I don't, you know, I have all these problems and there's narcos and there's coyotes in my backyard and I don't know what to do anymore. I'm just yeah. trying. And it's, and it's turned them both into you know, yeah. bad people. Yeah. And there's lots and lots of ants in here. <laughs> yeah, we, we, loved it. I, we really uh, tried to lean into the motif of animals in this movie, whether it's insects, you know, ants, cows, sheep, turtles, <laughs> what else we got, horses. And then the ants is like, because it's the, the animals don't know what country they're in, yeah. or what side of the border they're on, you know, just animals. And we're kind of, we're like that. Yeah. And no animals or, or insects were hurt during the film. No, no animals or insects were hurt during <laughs> really this weren't. movie. Yeah. Uh, well, congrats again on No Man's Land. It's a timely tale that speaks volumes about family love, love for a country, and love for oneself. So thank you. big congrats thank on that. Thanks. Thanks, uh, good luck on everything, you guys. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. it. <laughs> Thanks.